welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I am going to finally be talking to you guys about my handbook. You guys have been asking me so, so, so many questions and requesting this video, so I knew that I had to film this for you guys. I'm going to give you guys all of my policies. This video is going to be long. I know it. I'm trying to give you guys as much information. I'm not going to just put this video together sloppily and just give it to you guys. I want to make sure that it's a really good, informative video, so that's why it's super long. So this video is going to be helpful not only because I'm going over my policies, but because this video is in collaboration with Julie, and her channel is Learn to Play. The first video that I saw of Julie's was her in-home daycare tour, and I was obsessed. Her house is beautiful. I want to say it's massive. It looks massive to me, and she utilizes her space really well. So if you guys have a house and you guys don't know how to use your space, Go ahead and check out her tours. She has different versions of her tours. I know that she just uploaded one, I believe like two or three days ago. And there was an area that was before with like high chairs where they would eat. And then now she changed it. So you guys can kind of watch her videos and get like different versions. So you guys can see different ways to utilize your space. If you guys want to see like little ideas, check out hers. I love her daycare. And if I can take her house, I will take her house. <laughs> So Julie, thank you so much for reaching out to me. I'm really excited to be collaborating with you. And if you guys check out Julie's video, I'm going to have it linked above so you guys can click it. But she's also going to be going over what is in her handbook. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, if you guys want to see more policies, go ahead and check out Julie's channel. So let's go ahead and get started. My handbook is given to the parents before they tour my daycare. And the reason why I give them a copy of this before they tour my daycare is because I want them to read this. And if there's anything in this book that they do not agree with, they don't need to be in my program. Now, I don't want to sound rude, but obviously there's a little bit of things that can be worked with, like my hours of operation are from 7.30 to 6. If they need me to 6.30 once a week, I can do it, so it's not like they can't be in my program. But majority of what's in here is what I feel comfortable with and what I feel works for me. So just know that your handbook is really important. It's better to include over information, like extra information, than to not include enough. So I encourage you guys to make sure that your handbook is really good and really efficient. So my first page has my hours of operation. So I'm gonna include screenshots of my handbook. If you guys wanna copy it word for word, do whatever you want. It does not bother me. Um, this has worked for me and it might work for you guys too. So don't think that I'm gonna get mad if you guys copy my handbook word for word. But again, this is what works for me. So the first thing that we have on my handbook is hours of operation. So it says our hours of operation are from 7.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. So that's standard, that's what I have. Again, if I had a parent that needed me till 6.30 once a week or whatever the case is, I help them but there is an extra fee and I explain that to them obviously like beforehand. But those are my hours of operation. So if they know that I close at six and they don't even text me that they're gonna get there at 6.45 or at seven o'clock, I'm gonna have a problem with it. Everything that is outside of my hours of operation, I need to be notified about. I don't want anybody showing up my, at my house at seven o'clock in the morning if I open at 7.30 and I don't want them picking up after six o'clock if I close at six so I like to have that at the top but again if a parent needs me and they're courteous about it and they let me know hey Ashley I work a little bit later this day can you help me then obviously I would be like yes and then I know in advance so I'm not making plans with my kids after hours and everybody's happy so just have your hours of operation on the top after that it says enrollment information and requirements we must receive the following information in order to begin the enrollment process. So the first thing that I have is an application and an application fee. And it says that the application must be submitted for each child attending blank. When you guys hear the word blank, it's because my business name is inserted. So you would just include either your business name or an acronym, whatever, but I have my business name. And then it says the application fee is $35 per family and is non-refundable and non-transferable. So if Jessica pays me $35 for her daughter to come and then she doesn't want her daughter to come anymore, her sister wants her daughter to come, her sister is going to have to pay those $35. It's not transferable to anybody else. It says no exceptions and prices are subject to change. I never change my application fee, but I just put that there just in case. And then if I have three siblings enrolling, they only pay $35 for the application fee. I'm not going to charge $35 for each application. I just, I just wouldn't. Then it says photo consent. So I do have a photo consent form that I sent to them. It's just so that I can use their pictures whenever I'm advertising. So if I'm on Facebook and I want to put a picture of the kids doing activity and say, I have spaces open for enrollment and sometimes I'll use their picture, I have consent that I can use that photo. So photo consent is needed as well. And then it says certification of immunization records obtained from the child's physician, and I want that within the first 30 days. And then it also says child's health examination form obtained from the child's physician within the first 30 days. 
So those two forms, they have 30 days to get it to me and I always let them know that so that they're not rushing or calling off of work just to get the form. I have 30 days to be able to get it and then they can go ahead and bring that in to me. So it also says that parents are required to keep the provider informed on any changes in address, phone numbers, or other information listed on these forms. So if they move, you want to make sure that they're letting you guys know so you can update their application. If their phone number changes, you want to update it. If they want to add anybody on their emergency section of the application, you want them to let you know so that they can update it as well. And then it says the first two weeks that your child is attending blank are considered a trial period in order to determine whether your child is suitable for our program. This trial period may be extended for no longer than four weeks if we feel that the child is slowly adapting. I do trial days before enrollment. I keep the child for three hours before they enroll and I look at them, I observe them, I watch how they play with my other kids, if they have any habits, they eat with us, they do everything with us in those three hours. I normally schedule those trial hours in the morning because we do a lot in the morning so I can actually see the child in action. And sometimes those three hours isn't enough and then within like the first week you start seeing certain habits like hitting, pushing, kicking, and those are things that I like to look out for. And I always let the parents know that the first two weeks I'm still observing your child and trying to figure out if they're suitable for my program. Now, I like to do this because before I've had it happen where child did perfect during the trial and then when they came here it was a huge issue so I had to let the parents know that unfortunately I couldn't be able to care for their child anymore and they were okay with it they got a little bit upset but at the same time it's like if your child's harming either me or my child my children in my program I can't have that so I always let the parents know that up front so then we have tuition and payments it says tuition is to be paid every week Tuition is due on Friday for the upcoming week. So if today is Friday, they would send me payment today and that's gonna cover them for the upcoming Monday through Friday. So everything is in advance, it's not after. And then it says a late tuition payment of $5 will be applied each day tuition isn't paid. So if they don't pay me on Friday, they pay me on Wednesday, they owe me five, 10, $15 in late fees because their tuition was due on Friday and they paid me on Wednesday, if that makes sense. I don't count Saturday and I don't count Sunday. Late fees will start to be applied on Monday if tuition is not received. Tuition is never prorated. There will be no tuition adjustments, credits, or refunds due to sickness, holidays, vacations, closings due to natural disasters, or any other acts of nature. So I put closings due to natural disasters just recently, like, like two, three weeks ago, maybe last month. And it was because I did have a hurricane and I don't have control over the hurricane. If I have to close because I have no electric and I can't properly take care of kids, it's not my fault, you know, I rather have electric. I don't really intentionally want to have my electric, you know, gone and not work. And I don't want my wages to be affected by that. So I have that in my handbook. So the parents know that if in the future I have a hurricane and have to close for three days because I don't have electric, I'm not prorating tuition. So for the NSF fee, it says in the event that your check is returned due to insufficient funds, an additional fee of $35 will be applied. Enrollment will be suspended until full tuition payment and additional fees have been paid in full. After two return checks, you will no longer be able to pay by check. Other form of payment accepted. Other forms of payment accepted are cash, cash app, or money order. So for absences, it says that we understand that there are times that your child will be absent due to illness, vacations, holidays, etc. We ask that you please notify blank if your child will be absent. Tuition will not be waived or prorated due to absences of any kind. If tuition is not paid for due to any type of absence, enrollment will be suspended and your child will not be able to attend our program until the balance is paid in full. So I like to have that in my handbook and the reason why I like to have that policy in my handbook is because let's say Jessica is off on Monday and she doesn't want to bring her daughter. Let's say she just, she wanted to sleep in. She didn't feel like driving all the way to my house to drop off her daughter. And then she comes Tuesday and she goes, oh, I'm not going to pay you for Monday because she wasn't here. And I don't think that I need to pay her for Monday. Well, guess what, Jessica? It's due. And the reason why I have that in there is because there are going to be parents that are going to think that it's not fair that they have to pay when the child is in attendance. If they don't want to pay, I'm just going to say, I'm sorry. Tuition is still due. It's stated in my handbook and you agreed to that when you signed up for my program. I also wanted to mention about the tuition and payments. The reason why I do it prepaid is because there's people that will drop off their kid 
have you watch them and then they'll get up and leave and they won't even pay you. I had a parent that I was helping at one point and I watched her son for an entire month. They were having financial issues and I wasn't paid for an entire month and then they got up and they left. So I had a huge balance that was left. I worked, I fed that child, I did activities with that child so money was spent and it just bothers me because you know we put so much work and we give them so much love and attention and affection throughout the day and for the parent to just get up and leave it's not fair to me as a provider so I would never let a balance go over a week if a parent hasn't paid me for a week and they're going on two weeks I let them know that they can't come until that week is paid for and it's not to be mean it's not to be harsh it's just to protect myself because it's literally the people that you least expect to do it that do it after a week if they do not pay me for a week and then they get up and leave I'd rather have a week not paid that they didn't pay me than have a full month or more that they didn't pay me and then I'm out so much money if it makes sense. So make sure you guys are getting paid in advance. So it says arrivals and departures. Upon arrival and departure, parents are required to sign their child in and out every day. Please ensure that your child is dressed and ready to start their day at blank upon arrival. We do not accept children after 9.30. Children are also required to remove shoes upon arrival. I have the parents sign their child in and out every single day. I have the binder set up. If you guys want to watch a video on my binder, I have that as well. And then it says that make sure that your child is dressed up. So sometimes people would bring their kids in their pajamas and then they ask me to change their kid. Um, I try not to have that because it kind of sets me back. I mean, not a ton, but it's just an extra tax that I feel that's a parent's responsibility, not mine's. If they were taking their child to a facility, if they were taking their child to kindergarten at a public school, they make sure that they're dressed and they ask to have that same respect as well. And then I don't accept children after 9.30 and the reason why is because it just throws off their schedule. If you have a child that comes at 9.30, chances are they woke up late, they didn't have breakfast, they want to eat at the time that they get dropped off but lunch isn't until 11 and then they're probably not going to want to go to nap because they woke up late so they got extra, it just throws everything off so I don't accept any kids after 9.30. And then children are also required to remove the shoes upon arrival. I have a sign in the front of my house that says that. The kids already know. Take off their shoes. They put them down. And then if parents ever want to walk into my house to see their child, I ask them that they remove their shoes as well. So everybody, even myself and my husband, we remove our shoes before entering the house. We ask that the children do the same. Then we have authorized pickups. All children will only be released to parents, guardians, or any other person listed on the child's authorized pickup form. If someone not listed on the authorized pickup form is picking up your child, he or she will not be released from our care without direct permission from the parents in writing or via telephone. Identification will be required upon pickup. I feel like this basic self-explanatory, I'm not releasing the child to somebody that I don't know. Um, I've never really had any issues with that. Usually parents let me know, hey Ashley, my cousin's coming to pick her up or my sister's going to go pick her up and I don't have a problem with that. So it says before and after hours of operation. If you anticipate on arriving before or after our hours of operation, please contact blank immediately. If you anticipate on arriving before hours of operation, notice to the provider is required and a fee will apply. If a child is left at blank after closing hours, we will attempt to make contact with the parents first. If we are unable to reach the parents, we will proceed to contact the people listed on your child's authorized pickup list. If unable to reach any one to arrange pickup, we are required by law to report to the Department of Children and Family Services. There is also a fee applied for any child that is picked up after hours. There will be a fee of $5 for every half hour we care for your child outside of our hours of operation. The time is rounded up. So for example, if you arrive at 6.35 p.m., you will have $10 in late fees. So from 6 to 6.30, it's $5, and from 6.30 to 7 is another $5. Even if it's five minutes after, you're still gonna pay the full $5. I round up, I don't round down. So you hear what I'm saying? So if they come at 7.01, they owe me $15, even if it's a minute after. My time is valuable, guys. If they go to work and they are clocked in for an extra five minutes, they're gonna wanna get paid for that and so do I. So I have that in there. You guys can pick whatever number you want. It doesn't have to be $5 every hour, half hour. That just equals $10 an hour to me, which is okay. And I just think that you should have a late fee, guys. And I highly recommend it because you're gonna get those people that are gonna come late. And if you don't charge them late fees, they're gonna keep coming late. And they're not gonna care because not, there's no penalty. And when I first started my daycare, I closed at six ever since I opened up my daycare. And I had people that would come at 6.30 
6.45 and I wasn't charging them but there was a day where I was just fed up you know I had plans with my son I was gonna do something with him and they didn't even tell me that they were gonna come late and now all my plans are thrown off I just think that it's disrespectful and it's not courteous so again I do charge so vacation thought policy each full-time child will receive one free week of vacation once they have been enrolled in our program full-time consecutively for one year with no more than a two-week gap I have parents that have given birth and while they're on maternity leave they pull their child out and then they go back to work if they're out of my program for more than two weeks you have to earn another free week of vacation starting from the day that you bring them back so that's why I say with no week more than a two-week gap it says if you will be having a vacation prior to earning your free week of vacation tuition is still due in full and should be paid in advance so if you've had a student and they've only been with you for four months and they're about to take a vacation because they haven't met that full year they still have to pay for that week that they're not going to be here even if they don't even show up they still have to pay in full that's me if you guys wanted to do um, half the tuition because they're not gonna be there so be it you guys can do that I had a, a parent at one point that every three months they were leaving the state and then every three months that's X amount of money that I was a little bit short because that child was absent every three months and I was like no you get a week every single year and that's it because if not they're gonna be taking vacations all the time so it says daycare closings and holidays blank may be closed on some holidays if we are closed for a holiday we still require tuition in full so that's like if I'm closed on Labor Day on Monday and then I'm open the rest of the week, tuition is still due in full even if I'm closed on Mondays. So federal holidays are paid for me. It says tuition will not be waived or prorated. Holiday closings are included in our tuition price. So like I said, I'm about to be closed for Columbus Day, but the parents know that tuition is still due in full. Therefore, there are no adjustments made on weeks where there is a closing due to a holiday. Parents will be informed in advance in order to adjust their schedules. We also take two weeks of vacation each, each year. Those will be unpaid. Once your provider has determined the weeks of their vacation, they will be reported to all parents in advance. If we have to close the daycare due to natural disasters, example hurricanes or any other acts of nature, tuition will still be due and is not prorated or waived due to closings. So I do take two weeks of vacation every single year. They're spread apart, they're never consecutive. I just do it like that. Sometimes I might do it consecutive. For example, when I gave birth to Lucas, I didn't take any vacations that year. I just took two weeks of maternity leave and then I went back to work and those were consecutive. But every other time that I work, I have one in June normally and one in December normally so I do it like every six months and I'm closed for the week and I don't charge them and the reason why I don't charge them is because they still have to pay someone else to care for their kid and even if they don't and they call out and they're on vacation I just don't feel like I should be charging them for me being closed because I am personally closing um, and I also have those holidays that they paid so that's why I don't charge them when I'm on vacation then it says medication and it says medication will not be administered to the children while in care at blank if your child is required to take medication we ask that you give them the required dose before or after our business hours so I don't administer medication um, I just think that it's best for the parents to do it I've had kids that had ear infections and um, they're on their antibiotics for 24 hours and then they can return back to daycare and then the parents drop them off with their antibiotics and they tell you to do it I personally feel like that's something that the parents should take care of. I, 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 just, I just don't think that that's my responsibility, one. And then I just don't feel comfortable giving anybody any medications. If their child is on a daily medication, I ask that they give it to them. If there's a child that has, let's say, eczema or has like a little rash and they're supposed to put like a topical ointment on it, I'll do that. But when it comes to like antibiotics or Tylenol, Motrin, Benadryl, whatever it is, I don't give any of that. So my illness policy is pretty long. I'm gonna include it in the screen. You guys can read it if you guys want. It's just basically don't bring your kid when they're sick. And then I have a list of things that um, I don't accept. I know these kids like the back of my hand. If I feel like they're not feeling good or if I know that they have a fever, if I feel like they're best better off being at home, I will contact the parents. I'm very careful. I don't like to call the parents if they have a runny nose. Um, I feel like a lot of kids get runny noses. It's just like a viral thing, common cold. But when it comes to like fevers and stuff like that, 
I call parents for pickup. So again, this policy is pretty long and this video is already at 25 minutes. So if you guys want to read it, you guys can. And then medical emergencies, it just says we make every effort to ensure the safety of your child while they are in our care with proper supervision and child proofing the home daycare. Unfortunately, accidents may occur. Minor injuries such as bumps and bruises and scrapes will receive the appropriate first aid treatment. If you guys want to watch my first aid kit video, you guys can. In the event that there is a serious injury or illness, 911 will be called and your child will be transported to either the nearest hospital or the hospital listed on your child's file. You will be notified immediately. Your personal insurance will be responsible for any costs that may arrive from the medical treatment, including emergency transportation if required. So I just have that in there. You guys want to be responsible for the medical bills. And again, that's in my contract, so I don't have any responsibilities when it comes to that. So codes of conduct, the following actions are not permitted. Hitting, pushing, kicking, biting, spitting, pinching, and use of inappropriate language or behavior. We encourage all children to use manners and respect every day. We ask that as a parent, you work with us to continue to stress these standards of conduct to your child. Our rules have been set to ensure the safety of all children and staff. These rules will be discussed and taught to all the children enrolled and will be expected to be followed. Repeat, behavioral problems could result in termination, respect of property, and other children and staff is expected at all times. Willful destruction of property by any children would be charged to the parents. So again, if you have a child that's hitting, kicking, pushing, or causing any issues in your program, you're gonna wanna terminate them because not only are they doing something that they shouldn't do, but if, let's say, Jason is the one that hits, fights, kicks, and everything, and Anthony is always getting hit by Jason and you gotta make an incident report and tell his mom, this parent, of the child that's not doing anything wrong is going to get up and leave because they don't want their child to be in harm's way, correct? And then after that child leaves, Jason's going to find someone else to pick on and then next thing you know, you're going to have no kids in your program. So I personally would terminate the child if they're doing any of those things repeatedly and they don't want to respect you if they're spitting or if they're kicking or whatever because you're going to lose the other kids because parents are going to see that and parents are not going to want their kids around that. So I would recommend um, terminating the kid if it's really excessive. Um, I've had biters, sometimes it's a phase, it's okay. But if it's like maliciously, like they grab and they bite and they kick and they push, I would terminate. One, it's a headache for you, it's a liability. And then also, like I said, parents are gonna wanna take their kids out if their kid's continuously getting hurt. So the next policy is the discipline policy. We have found that the most effective form of discipline is to redirect children in a positive manner. If any behavioral issues occur with any child, we will work with that child in a positive manner. The following are our methods used for positive guidance. The first one is redirection. When a behavioral issue occurs, we will provide alternatives for the child. For example, we may suggest a different toy, a new activity, or encourage independent play in order to redirect the child. So I have a bunch of cars, a bunch of babies, I have two kitchens, I have a lot of multiples in every single toy, so if I see that two kids are fighting over one, I'll pull the duplicate and then I'll let them play with that. So I have a lot of duplicates in here, so there, there pretty much isn't that much of an issue when it comes to sharing toys. Sometimes you get those little issues, but it's nothing excessive. And then it, it says acknowledgement. Sometimes negative behavior can be a result of the need for individual attention. Some kids will literally do something and look at you because they want you to pay attention to them. You guys will see that. And it's not acceptable. They want attention and sometimes you just need to ignore it because once they see that you're looking at them every time they do something bad, they're gonna continuously do bad things because they want your attention. The behavior often discontinues when it does not produce the desired effect. Unless safety is involved, we will ignore such behavior. So then it says verbal intervention. We will explain to the child why his or her behavior is inappropriate and model the appropriate way to handle the situation. So if I see one child stealing a toy from somebody else and yanking it away from them, which I've seen it before, I tell them no, I take the toy away from them, I give it back to the child that had it originally, and I let them know, she's playing with that right now, let's go play with something else, and then when she's done playing with it, we can go ahead and we can play with it. But she had it first, so we're gonna let her play with it. And I do that, and then they're like, oh, okay, I just gotta wait my turn. The next thing we have is personal belongings. Please do not allow your child to bring personal belongings to our program. These items can be disruptive and can easily get lost or damaged. In the event that personal items are bought, we will kindly ask parents to remove the toy from the child prior to entering the program. Blank is not responsible for the cost of any personal items that have been bought to our program and have been damaged or lost. Then we have lunches and snacks. Lunches and snacks are provided by Blank. It is optional for your child to eat the lunch provided by us. 
you may choose to pack your child's lunch and snack if your child does not to choose to eat the provided lunch tuition will not be adjusted if you provide the food that's just my rule if you guys want to um give them a discount for packing the lunch you guys can do so so evaluations chat children enrolled in our program will be evaluated throughout the year to monitor their overall development our written evaluations are helpful to both the provider and parent in assessing your child's level of development these evaluations are merely to act as a communication tool between parents and your provider so that we may work together to enhance your child's strength and further develop their weaker areas. Please be sure to take the time to review the evaluations that are sent home to you. I just do ASQs, so you type in their age and you type in ASQ, you get the questionnaire, you do it, and I send that home to the parents. So communication, please make sure that you are part of our Facebook page. On this page, you will find our monthly newsletters and updates made to our program. If you do not have Facebook, please make it aware to the provider so that they can make sure to send updates directly to you. So again, I have a Facebook page with the parents, with my current parents and my current parents only. And whenever I want to update them, instead of sending every single one of them a text message, I just upload it to Facebook and everybody sees it and it shows me who has seen it. And um, I just like to have that there. And if they don't have a Facebook, then I'll send them that text. But everybody has Facebook in my program right now. So it says parent involvement, birthdays, and rest time. I'm going to include those on the screen so you guys can just read them. The last page I'm going to include it on the screen and it's about toilet training. I'm not going to go over all of that. I do have a few videos on potty training and it kind of has everything that's on this sheet. If you guys want to check those videos out, I'll have them linked down below. But I'm not going to go over the toilet training. I'm just going to go over the last two paragraphs. So the withdrawal policy. In the event that you choose to withdraw your child from our program for any reason, please notify us two weeks prior to his or her last day of attendance. If two weeks notice is not provided, you will be required to pay two weeks worth of your child's tuition prior to withdrawal. No documents will be released to you until your balance is cleared with blank. So then the last paragraph says, as a provider, I came up with all of these policies to best fit my business. My policies are strict and non-negotiable. If I feel that you are having trouble following or understanding my policies, I will sit down with you and verbally go over the policy you are unclear of or have trouble following. If I feel that you are still contesting and or violating my policies, your child's enrollment may be at risk for immediate termination depending on the circumstances. So if I feel that you're giving me a hard time and you're doing things that are stepping on my toes and you're taking vacations left and right and you don't want to pay for them and you're paying late all the time and you're always doing this or that or x or y or z and it's really affecting me i'm going to have a talk with you and we're going to try and fix it and if i see that we can't fix it i'm going to ask you to remove your child from my program um, i don't have any trouble terminating people there are some providers that are shy to terminate people i'm not if i feel like it's not working it's just not working and i'm sorry <laughs> but that's my handbook guys. This video is really long, but I wanted to film it to you guys because I think that this handbook does have a lot of good information in it. Again, you guys can use my handbook for whatever you guys want and um, I don't mind. If you guys have any questions about anything, leave it down below. You can also check out my Instagram. I do check my Instagram often, so if you want to send me a private message versus a public comment, go ahead and do so and then I'll message you. That's basically my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, check out Julie's channel. Check out her handbook video. I'm pretty sure it's gonna have good information. Her program looks like it's structured very well. I see how the way that she has everything set up with the tables, they learn, they eat over here. And then I watched her day in the life where she's serving them their food. Like it looks like it's very structured. And I think that her handbook would probably be really, really, really good as well. So really check out Julie's channel. And Julie, again, thank you for reaching out. I'm really excited that we collaborated on this video. And I'm excited because this is my first collab on my vlog channel. And yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching my handbook video. Please subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already. And I will see you guys in my next video.